Hey, it's Alice Siva. I am so glad you're here for session number one study group, planning your content with results in mind. And this is a study session for our intensive content results program. And if you are watching this in the premiere part uh, when on YouTube, that means that we are watching this live together and I'll be in the chat area, <clears throat> be able to answer your questions. I will maybe add some few updates or things as we go through it, as this was a lesson that was recorded a few years ago. However, I tend to share a lot of, you know, evergreen stuff, but when there are updates, I will put it in the chat and I'll keep any relevant notes and put them in the members area for you. If you are watching this uh, after the premiere, or as a recording, then you can use the comments area of the video or join us in the Discord group. There is a general discussion there. So this session is going to help you find a purpose for your content. So it helps both you and your audience. And I'm going to share the number one secret to getting results from your content that most people actually get backwards. And I think it's going to be a lot of relief for you guys if you have PLR um, a lot of PLR sitting on your library. One of the biggest things I want you to get out of this is not feel so much pressure to publish everything. PLR content is such a great time and money saver, right? You are getting content at such an amazing price. So if you buy a big package or something like that, you don't need to use everything because the value comes from just leveraging a, a, th a few things. Many times one piece of content from a whole entire package. If you end up using it effectively, that is good enough. Um, and then why planning works? Because I know a lot of people, you know, say they have so many ideas and they're not sure how to put them into, into, into practice. So this is really going to help you, especially after if you were at our free class the other day, you know, you're probably swimming with ideas. Let's get into planning mode where we can sort that out and get going. Also, I'm going to talk about the strategic content marketing plan workbook that I put together, and that's going to change everything for you. Um, also, and that's it, I think, and I think we're ready. So I will see you in the chat. And just one more thing before we begin. So anytime I refer to, you know, picking up any documents or mentioning links or mentioning a Facebook group or not using Facebook, we're using Discord, everything you need is in your members area. And anywhere on this video, you'll see an I in the top right corner. And if you click that, it'll, I believe it'll bring you down to links. And that is the link to our members area. Now, if you're registered and logged into your eKit Hub account, it will take you directly to that area. That's where everything will be updated, all the correct dates, everything that is, you know, up to date for today. And also, if you're not logged into your eKitab account, you just need to click the link at the top. And if you're not registered for the program, it'll prompt you to register. So anytime uh, throughout the, these three sessions, we will have that. And also at the end, um, when you, if you stay right to the end, it will redirect us to a live video that we'll do and we'll actually be able to chat live and in person about this. So uh, stay tuned, stay for the whole class and we're going to have uh, time to talk. All right. So officially, I wanted to welcome you and congratulate you on taking your first step to getting more profitable results from your content. And so we're gonna do a bunch of training here for the next three days, and then we're gonna get into our challenge. And I'm gonna officially start that challenge on Monday. Obviously, you could start working through everything, getting everything going anytime you want, but official challenge will start Monday, which is uh, January 29th, and we'll go to February 27th, which will give us 30 days. But of course, you guys wanna keep doing this for a long time after on your own, or you know the group will still be open, so we can always chat there. Um, I know a lot of the, these types of challenges focus on just getting you to publish more, you know, like they say, you know, blog every day or write 2000 words every day with no real goal in mind. So what we're going to do 
we're going to do something differently here because the focus is always going to be on getting you more subscribers and customers. And that's what we want, right? I've seen the power of content for over 16 years now. And my focus has always been to turn those visitors into loyal buyers, not just followers, because followers are great. And, you know, you'll always have those and some people will never buy, but you want as many of those followers to be buyers and do it as quickly as possible. So I hope that sounds good to you guys. Here's what you can expect in this program. Um, as I just mentioned a moment ago, we're going to get together for three training sessions over the next three days where I'm going to show you exactly how I approach my content marketing and I teach my customers to do as well so that, you know, they're consistently working towards results. Today's session is planning your content with results in mind. Tomorrow, we'll talk about getting it done and building your team, even for free. Lots of ideas to do this on a, on a budget. And sorry, I'm see, I'm already getting distracted by other windows. Look at me. <laughs> sorry about that. And then on Thursday, we're going to do publishing and getting results. So we're going to walk you through all of it. And this is what we're all, and then once you're through that, we're going to do that 30 day challenge through the Facebook group. Like I said, starting on Monday, January 29th and running through February 27th. Now you can see the link to the Facebook group right here. And I'm going to put that link into the chat for you. Oh, I already can't operate stuff here. Uh, the link in the chat as well. Except for I can't type and I didn't have it copied and pasted. Magnets. So it's listmagnets.com slash ICR, which just redirects to Facebook and you can join the, the group there. So make sure you're part of that. And you can start now because we can talk about the training that went on today and things like that. You don't have to wait till Monday. All right. So I do look forward to working with you in the coming weeks. And, um, you know, if you per you're here for just your personal use for this training, like you just want to do this for yourself, then that group is perfect for that. You are also, if you purchase the private label rights to this content and you want to be able to sell it as your own training program, uh, you can ask those types of questions there as well. All right, to start this session, um, what uh, you'll need, you should have your uh, monthly, your monthly planner. It's a spreadsheet that we're gonna work through. I'm gonna show you an example of my actual plan for my elite writer's lab that uh, it's where we work with writers and teach them how to make a living from their writing. You'll see how I've done it and give you some ideas on how, how you might apply this as well, because this is how I plan every month. And I'm sharing with you the stuff that I, that I, that I do. So you can find that. And this is a protected file because it's for customers only. That's at listmagnets.com slash monthly plan. So you can grab that there if you don't have it. Um, if you it's not such a big deal because you'll see it on my screen. I just thought if you want to work on it while you're, we're going along as well, that you can grab it there. I'm just going to put that in the chat as well. And if I type these links in wrong because I didn't copy and paste them first, you just let me know and I'll, <laughs> and we'll fix it up. Or if someone can correct it for me, even better. All right. So, the, as far as questions go, I mentioned, you know, I'll, I'll try to answer questions as we go along, as, as I see them, and if, if, if I'm, you know, it fits in with what we're doing, but we will have a Q&A at the end, so you can ask anything. Uh, we'll do two Q&A sessions. We're going to do one first for the people who, who um, are just here for personal use, and then we'll do a second Q&A for the people who bought PLR rights, so that way the people who, who aren't here for the PLR rights can, you know, exit the training if they, they want to. So let's get started. All right, first, now you're here, so I might be preaching to the choir, but I think it's important to cover this for those who might not know and to re reiterate for those who do, because we want to talk about what are the benefits of content for your business. Let's just talk about a few of them. 
Uh, it's an inexpensive way to generate more exposure for your online business. You know, it can come from search engine traffic, repeat visitors, links, and word of mouth. Uh, it costs nothing for you to create your own content. I've got lots of ideas on how to get other people to make your content for free or cheap, right? So, you know, the internet is about information and entertainment and that your content provides that to people. It's how you connect with your customers. It helps you establish your expertise in your market. You know, whether you realize it or not, you've got some expertise they're craving or some unique thing about you that draws people to you. Perhaps, you know, you don't consider yourself as an expert at this point, but you connect your audience with great information, other experts. There's so many, so many things that you can provide through content. It might be your knowledge on a subject or the viewpoint you have that's just a little bit different to other people, or your uncanny ability to motivate people into action. Sometimes people just need a cheerleader, right? And you can do that through your content. You have something your target market is craving and it's content is a perfect way to show them that. It also builds relationships with your current and prospective customers. Don't forget this. I think a lot of us, once they're on our customer list, we kind of forget this part. But if you share good content and give good advice, you create that bond between the people who have paid you good money for things. And sometimes you create content just for them because of what they've purchased, things that they didn't expect. Because when you deliver, deliver good stuff, they're more likely to buy from you again. And of course, and this is really why we're here and what I said, we're here to get results. On target and well-crafted content promotes the products that you're selling. We're gonna, sh this course is really gonna focus on showing you the invaluable skill of selling informatively and conversationally because we're not turning content into a sales page. We're keeping it informational or entertaining. It doesn't always have to be in information, but that's gonna be our focus. All right, thank you. Lexi says the links are all good. So the Facebook group link and everything and the link to the monthly plan are there for you in the chat. All right, so I hope that makes sense and we're ready to go. Um, my promise to you it, throughout this training is that I'm gonna save you time and money. A lot of people think, oh gosh, she's gonna make me She's gonna make me publish every day. She's gonna make me, you know, spend a bunch of money on ghostwriters and all this stuff and too much money on PLR because I know a lot of people are, people are spending too much money on PLR and not using it. <laughs> That's a problem, <laughs> but we'll have to fix that. Um, but I am all about, you know, saving time, having the freedom to do things that I wanna do and not be stuck at the computer all day. So I'm, I'm gonna teach you guys that. And this is based, because I believe in two things. The first is less is more. And second, conversion trumps popularity. And I'll, I'll explain those ideas to you. Uh, you know, as far as less is more goes, when you focus your efforts and leverage the work of others, you're going to get way better results. There's no need to spend hours a day writing content. Because what you say is always more important than how often you say something. So get rid of the idea that you have to get everything to everywhere every single day. Well, there's one exception to that that you guys are going to learn later that I'm going to suggest that you do every day. But if you don't, that's your decision. <laughs> Plus, you know, there's so many opportunities to leverage the work of others through guest authors, ghostwriters, private label content, and other, other sources, right? And then I'm going to talk to you about these, talk to you about how to get people to do stuff for you for free. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities for you to even to create your content, own content quickly. It doesn't have to be your life's work every time you publish something. So now at odds, that's going to seem, um, pardon me, at times that's going to seem at odds with us doing a 30 day challenge where I'm going to be encouraging you to publish something every day. Right. So like Alice is saying, we don't have to work so hard, but we're going to have to do something every day in this challenge. But we're doing that for a couple of reasons. You should publish something every day and do it with purpose. But that doesn't have to take a long time. 
I'm also encouraging you to develop good habits. And if you want to be consistent, you have to start being consistent. So the challenge is going to be a great opportunity to do that. And through that, I'm going to encourage you to constantly be evaluating what's right for your business. Because I know a lot of people will tell you, you must do this. You have to do this. You have to publish this every day. You have to send this every day. I'm going to suggest to you things. And if it doesn't seem right for you, and you've got logical reasons for that, then by all means, don't listen to me. <laughs> but if you're not sure, say you're thinking, well, this doesn't sound right to me. And you're not sure, post in the Facebook group, right? You know, and, and get some feedback. I'm not a rules-based person. I never tell you you have to do something, but I'll certainly tell you what I think is best for you. And I'm gonna also hopefully give you the tools where you'll be able to figure that stuff out for yourself. So if right now you're like, oh my goodness, she's telling me I can do whatever I want and I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to give you that background and that foundation where you're gonna be able to make those decisions for yourself. So now let's talk about the second part, and it's conversion trumps popularity. Nothing to do with Donald Trump. Okay, sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> Anyways, in today's social web, it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that popularity equals success. We always, you know, seem to look up to and admire those people who have huge followings but I've gone that route before and I'll tell you, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. It's a lot of work and a ton of expectations from your audience. And let's be real, you know, likes and comments do not pay the bills. So I don't care. I mean, I like likes and comments, but it's not my focus. It's getting people for my focus for you is getting people on your list and then buying stuff. And that's what we've got planned for you. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about the most important key principle in content marketing if you're going to look for results. And it's simply said, it's know your purpose. And I'll explain, of course. <laughs> All the content you create should serve a purpose and you should be conscious of that purpose. You know, not every... I don't mean that you have to sell a product like a used car salesman or nor does each piece of content have to be your life's work. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're writing content for business purposes, it simply needs to serve a need for your readers. And in turn, you need to be conscious of how it is benefits your own business. It might be something you've not thought about until now, but if you're creating content, having a purpose for that content is going to go a long way for you because let's face it, publishing content for content's sake, thinking you have to, thinking you want more traffic, so I better, put, I better publish something is only going to drain your time and or your wallet if you're spending a lot of money. So instead, start that thinking about the purpose of each piece of content before you create it. Let's talk about a few purposes that your content might serve. I mean, it could be search engine food, right? Lots of people find your website through keyword searches that lead to highly targeted content pages. So that's traffic. Word of mouth material as well. You know, same great content gets people talking, can drive traffic, uh, whether it's informative, entertaining, or conversational, that builds your traffic and readership. But those two things are traffic and traffic for traffic's sake is not enough. So let's go further with your purpose. You're gonna to want to use your content to drive traffic to an opt-in, opt-in form, an opt-in offer, a free gift, something you're giving away. You know, for example, if you sell debt consulting services, give your reader something they can use. For example, you could create a report on understanding your credit or give out information on how creditors actually work against debtors goals. This type of content is the easiest way to grow your list because it's information that gets traffic through search engines, through word of mouth or whatever. And it's also perfect for paid advertising campaigns. Like we're talking about, you know, free traffic here. Once you know that your, tra your content is bringing you new subscribers and those new subscribers are bringing you customers, 
and you know which pieces of traffic, which pieces of content are bringing you those, it'd kind of be crazy not to pay for some advertising for that. So you've already set it up that you know you could start a profitable advertising campaign. So if you've been, we're not going to cover advertising because that is not my area of expertise, but it's something to think about more ways to get, use your content and go further. It's also content is pre-sell material. Pre-sell them on your products and services. Or if you're an affiliate for a product, then, you know, for, for, for that. Uh, for example, you know, if you sell a crock pot in your e-commerce store, write articles on using crock pots, posting recipes, publish reviews, show product comparisons, all kinds of stuff. There's, there's, you know, and people ask me if this training is for any, like just for internet marketing or if it's for any niche. It's for any niche or niche if you prefer. I know there's really strong debate about that. So <laughs> take your pick, but it is really is for any, anybody. What if you have limited products? That's a great question, Patricia asked and right at the right time. Um, I don't think you need a lot of products. I mean, for example, that crock pot, let's say all you sell, all you sell is a crock pot. Um, so many uh, options, recipes, reviews, reviews from your customers, etc. cetera, uh, articles about using them. So, so many possibilities. And, and Patricia, you know, in the group or even in the Q and A session, if you know, you want to kind of share what you do, then we could talk about it and generate some ideas for, for you as well. And the third thing I wanted to mention too, about having a purpose, and this goes back to what I was talking about your customer relationships, but content for customers that helps them consume your products make better use of them and shows them how further products can help them is a win-win for all. You know, we get a little bit shy about sharing our stuff or, you know, get telling our customers how we can help them further, but it is helpful to them. So stop thinking that, you know, you're, you're making a sales pitch. If you meant, if you had a friend who needed to solve a problem, you would tell them about your pro the products and services that you recommend. All right. So, you know, for example, for your customers, you can give them a surprise bonus guide that shares stories from other customers who successfully use the product you're selling, right? It's just stories. People love stories, but it shows them how they're using it. It's like case studies, right? And then include other information on other products that would help them even further. The end result of something like that is increased customer satisfaction with fewer refunds, more word of mouth and repeat purchases. Right. Sue, so, um, I, I think that question might be good for later. There is a question, a Q&A box, or it's, yeah, it's called Q&A. Can you please post that one there? I would definitely recommend, and I know, oh, it looks like you, you did that. Okay, perfect. So I'll get to that one later. For everybody else too, if it's a question you want to make sure I answer as opposed to just, you know, maybe see where you guys are talking to each other, use the Q&A part but the chat is great for for chatting and I I love that you guys are doing that as well all right so and you know sometimes you know I'm talking about having a purpose for your content and sometimes you'll post content just because right to create goodwill with your audience to entertain them and to establish your expertise particularly on social media I think on social media you have to walk a finer line right between promoting and and uh and, and just informing or entertaining. But sometimes you'll do that, but the, that shouldn't, I think should not be your main focus if you want results from your content. Because even your content with conversion purposes is gonna create goodwill and entertain and establish your expertise. That's the thing, because if you know how to create your content expertly, which I'm gonna show you, in our next training is your customers will not only thank you for helping them, they'll also readily buy you, buy from you. Does that make sense? Like, you know, if you think about it and, and I mentioned actually a social media, a social media as well. And when I said you shouldn't put your focus, I didn't mean not put your focus in social media. I meant not put your focus in content that doesn't have a purpose. Um, for example, and I don't know if she came to the training today. I bet a lot of people here probably know Lynn Terry. Lynn Terry is the low carb traveler. There she is. Okay. She's here. <laughs> she 
is an amazing person to watch on social media. Um, you can just search for low carb traveler on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. I don't know. If she, are you on Twitter? Because I don't know if I follow you on Twitter. I like Twitter. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so, and everyone's saying hi to Lynn because many people know her, but she is great at the friend thing that I'm talking about. Like she's sharing, she's selling almost all, not all the time because social media she posts a lot but uh, but I'm still you know there's still something in the background but she's sharing her life she's sharing what she does she talks about the products she uses to do those things and her you know people love her they listen to her they consider her a friend and they're you know following through with what what she's recommending and using for herself so a perfect example of someone to watch on social media All right, so now that we have this background and, and uh, oh, that was a slide you guys were supposed to see while I was talking before, sorry. <laughs> Let's just keep going. We're ready to start planning, okay? Don't get nervous, you're like, oh, I still don't know how to create content, I don't know how to do this. We're gonna talk about that stuff tomorrow and I'm taking you through this step-by-step step, and you guys will be able to ask me questions, so don't worry. But I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the three steps to planning your content. I'm going to cover them briefly, but then you're going to see it in action when I, I'm going to pull up my example of the monthly planner and you'll see what I do. So the first step is to plan your products and promos, not plan your content. A lot of people approach their content marketing from the wrong side. You know, they just try to figure out what kind of information their audience wants and deliver it, which is a great thing because your audience probably totally loves that. But it's not, you know, it's not going to get you to the goals that you want to achieve in getting subscribers and customers. Um, and often, you know, those are the people who don't plan ahead either. They'll just sit at their computer or on their mobile phone and like thinking, hmm, what should I post today? What should I post today? I do it too now and then, you know, I do plan, but sometimes I fall off the wagon or a few, there's a few gaps where I'm like sitting there going, what am I going to post? What should I do? But the problem with that is it's a time waster. I don't like to waste time. And it rarely helps you churn out content that grows your business. So from here on in, you need to think about the promotions you're going to have first before you start thinking about content. So maybe you're launching a product, maybe you're having a sale, or you, know, you just want to introduce your audience to a new product or service, or you're promoting products as an affiliate. You'll notice that low carb traveler, Lynn, she, you know, I think in that market, in the niche of low carb, uh, everything she promotes is as an affiliate. And if for anybody who is new and doesn't know what that means, it basically means that you sign up with a company who sells a product that you love or, or want to promote and they give you a special link. And every time you give, bring a sale to them, they, they will uh, pay you a commission. So we're going to schedule these promos into a calendar and we're and actually so that you can see them at a glance and we're going to do that. It's not a, I do it on a regular calendar, but the spreadsheet I gave you is a list, which is also helpful too. You know, it'll be a list in order and you'll see that when we go through the planner. So that's step one to plan your products and your promotions. Now, step two, and maybe, you know what, I'm going to just take a real quick look, see if there's anything we need to address before we continue on. <sighs> Lexi says she makes a plan and then doesn't follow it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's understandable. That does happen too. But when you start doing it, you're going to be like surprised. And Lynn... And I know this about Lynn. Lynn says she stinks at planning. And I know, she, I know she flies by the seat of her pants a lot of the times and she will readily admit it. But I can't imagine like what she would be doing, could be doing if, you know, she added that in, into, into everything. On, on one hand though, she is a lifestyle kind of blogger or social media person. So there is some of that, you know, unplanned stuff, but yeah. All right, and that's, she says that's why she's here. 
Okay, and Okay, Patricia, we're going to look at that one after something specific there. Okay, perfect. So I think we're all good and we're going to keep on going. Now we're on step two. And that's going to be to plan your content around your products and promotions. So once you know what you're going to sell, it's much easier to figure out what kind of content you should be creating. If you launch a, you're launching a product, you might want to warm your audience up ahead of time so they become familiar with the subject. You can get them excited about what you've got coming, and you can also help overcome any objections they may have to buying your product when, you're, when your promotion goes live. And I think that applies to information products. It applies also to you know, consumer products. Maybe the, it depends on what the consumer product is. Maybe the pre-launch isn't uh, needs to be as big but I mean think about you know big companies like Apple and things like that and how they they do they do a pre-launch for their consumer product because they're talking about the features of the phone and they're you know people addressing concerns people are like there's a lot of conversation generated around it it's they're even doing content marketing And I'd say also, you know, if you're doing and when you're doing uh, when you're planning your content around your products and promotion, we're thinking about like a pre launch time if it's applicable and then the actual promotion. And I'd say it's best to stay focused in these periods, right? Stay focused on that topic. I know that a lot of times we think we need variety to keep our audience's attention. So, you know, we might be promoting something one day and then we'll go off onto a different topic the next day, kind of disturbing that flow. And I guess you can do that if you want to, but I don't recommend it. I disagree. The more focused you get, the more your audience gets on board and they get excited about what you're talking about and they'll get excited about that product. And it's true. Sure, some people won't be interested. So I understand the urge to maybe talk about other things so that you don't lose people. But I think there is a way to, you know, get people interested in your content, even though they're not going to buy that product that you're ultimately selling. There is a way to engage them, give them value, things that they can think about and, and, and do based on what you provide them, even if they don't pull open their wallets. But of course, they might unsubscribe from your list. And that happens for a ton of reasons. And it should never worry you. You know, keep focused on your business goals and the members of your audience that are sticking around. Those are the people that you want to focus on, the people that you want to keep delivering great stuff to. I think we're an amazing, you know, we, uh, in online marketing, we have amazing opportunities here. Like if we have a shop in our local town, you know, we have to cater to those people who are in the town. If we don't have the stuff they like, then we're going to run out of customers on the internet we get to shape the audience that we want and who, you know, I mean, to some degree, obviously, if something totally does flops and they don't want it, then, well, you learn something from that. But we are able to kind of shape their ideas through content and how they view things and also attract those people who want what we have to offer. And there's no sort of shortage of people. So it's a fantastic opportunity, I think. All right, let's move on to step three, which is going to be covered more tomorrow. It is in the monthly planner we're going to look at, but we'll, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, and it, the step is how will it get done? And like I said, I'm here to save you time and money. And stepping up your content marketing game and being part of this challenge doesn't mean you're going to work yourself to death. I promise you that. You're going to work hard though, and you're going to challenge yourself. You're going to get out of your comfort zone or you're selling yourself short, but it's not going to be ridiculous and not without benefit. So this part is going to, as I said, is going to overall app into our second lesson, which I'll cover getting content created and building your team. Um, so for now, keep this in mind <clears throat> and you'll see again, it's the, a part of the planner that I'm going to show you as well today. Now, I think so far, you know, from the chat, it seems like you guys are kind of kind of on board with planning. Nobody's really, really, really objecting to the idea. Although, oh, did I just turn my webcam on somehow? 
no. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Too many windows open here. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. How do I go back? Anyone? Jeez. Oh, Laugh at me guys. Cause I'm a little bit silly. Uh, okay. Oh, come on. Sorry. And I'm going to still try to find, figure out how I get the chat back. I just did it again, didn't I? <laughs> oh, you guys, I know your time is valuable. I said I'd save you money and here I am, or save you time. And here I am wasting your time because I'm not very good at this stuff. Since see, you know, like technology baffles me and I still manage to get, get this stuff done. So hopefully that's helpful to you guys. What I am, the reason this is happening is because I'm trying to pull up the, zoom menu where'd it go i can't see the chat and i can't see the oh my gosh what is this um okay i guess i have to go over here now though am i share not sharing my screen maybe did i stop sharing my screen guys Ah, okay, that's what happened. Okay, that's why. All right, guys, I will. I couldn't even find the, the chat to even get you guys to tell me that. So now we're back. I don't know why I, I clicked something, something bad along the way. Uh, okay, and I'm just gonna take a quick peek here at the, I did it again, didn't I? <sighs> I am such a nerd. Okay. That says chat, there we go. We can hear you, just not seeing anything. Okay, sometimes the menu bar in Zoom disappears. That is correct. All right, so. I'm back to PowerPoint, thanks Bill. That's where I wanna be. And I'm gonna try not to click past this. Okay, anyway, as I said, that it seemed like you guys were okay and on board with uh, planning. But I know people hesitate. They're like, mm, you know, I'll just, I'll just figure it out as I go. So I want to take a few moments to talk, talk to, um, talk to, to why planning works. And you can do it on the fly if you want. I just think that's crazy because you're going to spend way more time in the long run and you're going to water down your results because you don't know the full purpose of your content. So spend a couple hours planning now and you'll save time and you'll just be, you know, you're not going to be sitting there wondering what the heck you should do later because you figured it out already. You will also have, you know, planning your content means you're always going to have an available supply of content ideas. Content can be published for you on a regular basis without too much effort on your own. Now, see, that's the thing is if you want to build a team of people who create your content for you, whether you're paying them or they're doing it for free, you have to plan ahead. You know, you can't just be doing everything at the last minute because no one's going to, no one's going to help you. You also are able to shape your pro content around your product launches and other projects. So a well-planned product launch and promotion should always be done in conjunction with your content planning. So in short, like we have on the screen, planning works because it saves time. You're more focused and you know exactly what needs to be done. You're more efficient when you've planned ahead, you have time to hire, buy, and recruit people. You also create momentum because it's easier to come up with a continuous stream of content that builds on the previous piece. You create and continue to grow interest from your audience because you have a plan to see it the whole way through. It's also great for consistency. The way to keep an audience attention is through consistency, for being in touch regularly. Without a plan, it's much tougher to do. You're also going to get better results. You're planning your content around your promotions and you know exactly where you're going. You're going to get more subscribers and customers as a result. So now we're going to walk through the monthly planner so you can see it in action and work through all the steps for yourself. And now I've got to change the screen that I'm sharing <laughs> because I'm going to show the, the slide. All right. Okay. So
So here's my new share. There we go. Can you now see my, and I have the chat. I know sometimes the chat and having the questions open has sometimes obstructed the view. Is it, Can you see the spreadsheet on my screen with no obstructions? I think I'm gonna have to close it though. I'm not gonna be able to see. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys. All right. So here you see a spreadsheet and it's got five tabs. And let's just start at the end quickly. I'm not going to read through this, but this has the brief instructions. So if you forget what I told you, it kind of gives you an idea of how to work through it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory though. Once you know we've talked about it here, I think you'll have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, so the for the purposes of this challenge, if you are joining us live, if you're listening to this recording later then the dates may vary. But for you guys, we're going to start on January 29th and run to February 27th, a full 30 days. So those are the dates that you want to focus on. If you're joining us later, you can just adjust the dates and, and you know, figure out what works for you. All right, so let's start with the first tab. We saw where the instructions are if you need them later. But the first tab is where you're going to list your promos that you're going to do in the month. Uh, and how many you do will depend on your business. I know people are going to ask, how, how many do I do? How long do I do it for? And all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're, and I, I mean, we could talk about your individual circumstance because I don't think there is any one blanket answer. I think if you're an information product seller and you're releasing a huge training program, you might only do, you know, one promo or two promos for the month. You might keep a, a heavier focus on what you're trying to sell. Um, if you, or, and, or, and also I think co the co how much you're asking people to invest will, will also reflect on how, how often you're going to do a promotion. If you sell consumer products in a, more inexpensive ones, you probably move through promotions more quickly. You need to use your own judgment on how much you need to build up with content and how long the stuff in your promos are going to run for. Um, and again, if you want to ask for feedback during this training or in the, in the group, we can certainly do that. But you're going to learn it through experience as well, kind of figure out what works for, for you. So as I said, this is for my Elite Writers Lab that I run with Ron Douglas. I think a lot of you guys will know him as well. Um, and we work with writers who want to make a living from their writing. So that is our focus here. Um, and let me just tell you, so this first column here is the promotion that you're going to be doing. For example, we're going to be doing the bestseller summit that I know also a lot of you probably have attended in the last couple of years. It's an online summit where we bring in a bunch of experts that tell, teach writers, uh, book authors and information product sellers, how to, to sell more of their products. And we're going to also do, so that's something we're running. It's a product that we're selling and we have a, well, actually, I'm not going to get into that part yet. Um, and then we're going to do a webinar. So a free sales webinar. Um, and this is a great way to get content to your audience. If they're available in your niche, um, you might have to look a little harder in, in some others in internet marketing and writers and that kind of stuff. It's easy to find, but you know, you can also create them if you don't, if, if other people aren't doing them. But as an income generator, these are fantastic. So what it is, is it's free education for people to come on. And there is a, a, a sales pitch for a product, often training software. Um, it could be, you know, consumer products. I don't, you know, I don't know in a lot of niches if they're doing stuff like that. But I imagine that they are out there. I don't know if they're available. And you are basically an affiliate. So you promote this free webinar. The people who run the webinar usually give you all the promo tools that you need, the stuff, content you need to get out. They run the webinar and then you share the, you know, the recording and things like that after. And it can generate a lot, you know, for the amount of clicks and emails, you know, that you sent out to promote it or, you know, if you're posting it to social media or advertising, the return is usually really good. So I'd encourage you, you know, 
with an idea of something to do. And then we're going to do a content cash flow promotion at the end of the month. Content cash flow is an information product where I teach people how to start a private label rights business. I'm giving you this background on what it is to also, you know, give you ideas because these are content based products, right? So yes, we're talking about using free content to grow subscribers and customers, but I want to also give you some ideas and get, you know, your creative juices flowing on what you might develop or what you might find to promote. So the second column is pre-launch. So if you're going to have a pre-launch period, you know, put the date that that's going to start there. So that would be the time where you ta start talking about the topic or whatever it is, you know, if it was your selling, your releasing your brand new crock pot, you're going to release content on that, right? Recipes and talk about the features of your product and things like that. So it doesn't just apply to information products. Um, and again, how long that is, is, you know, it's, it's it depends. Um, for me, for example, when I'm selling, selling private label rights content, I don't really do much of a pre-launch other than I say something's coming up unless it's a higher ticket item. For the best seller summit because it's a big summit there's lots of information involved in the summit you know it's a bunch of presentations we have so much content we can get out and we can get people excited about it so we do it early the webinar promotions are usually a few days before the actual webinar and for the content cash flow because this is a product i've already released it's uh, just a promotion that we're going to do we're not going to do a pre-launch period is this helpful too, I want to make sure <laughs> because my situation is not the same as yours and I totally get that but I'm hoping that it's just getting you to think Leslie says very helpful Amelia as well great okay and you still see my do you guys still see my no I, I took the screen I took it off again didn't I <laughs> was that was that no to if you could see my spreadsheet, Mike, or it's not helpful? <laughs> Dang. <sighs> Why did that do that? Okay. Lynn says, I love seeing your planning because I've seen the public side. So seeing behind the scenes helps as well. Okay, good. I'm back. Okay, perfect. Okay, goodness. All right. So then we have the start date of the actual promotion when it actually starts. So this is the date when the bestseller, people can register for the bestseller summit. The best, it actually, the summit starts later and that's all complicated, but it's the start date of when people can register and then the end date of the promotion. You know, we're working with affiliates. We'll have an affiliate contest. So they'll be able to earn commissions and stuff between those dates. So you wanna have you wanna just have that. So you have this at a glance. And like I said, I actually do it on a regular old calendar that is in my planner. I have a weekly planner, but then it has a monthly calendar at the beginning of each month. And that's where I write this stuff in so I can see it more visually. Um, so, you know, however you wanna do it, I would probably do it both, do it here and then do it in the calendar so you can see it at any time. And then here in this column where we've got some content ideas. So you don't have to go in detail here. This is just you starting to think on how you can, you can, what kind of content you can make. So we're going to do the real actual planning in the other tabs. But here we're thinking we've got last year's recordings that we can take excerpts from or release in the whole. We've got the transcripts, notes, and all those kinds of things. And, um, We've got, we can do live interviews, you know, Facebook Live, we introduce people to our speakers. Uh, we can hand out tips from last year, lots of options on how we could promote an online summit. For the webinar, uh, the swipes will be provided by Greg, who's going to be running the webinar for us. Um, but sometimes the swipes are, I haven't seen his, so I'm not saying anything about him, <laughs> but sometimes they're not great. So I try to think about how I can enhance them, how I can maybe give people more information about, in this case, using LinkedIn to get clients and things like that. And think about how I can educate them as I encourage them to sign up for this free event. Maybe, you know, I give them a free download or something. I've got a lot, you know, if you guys are PLR hoarders, um, I'll get that, I'll answer that in a sec, Bridget. Good question. Um, I know a lot of people are PLR hoarders here. <laughs> So 
So, you know, for me too, I know I have stuff on LinkedIn. I could give out a report. I can, I've got stuff that I can, that I can offer. Um, and Bridget asks, uh, what are swipes? Great. It, it, it refers to a swipe file. And basically, I don't actually, you know, I don't know when I started using this word in this sense, because I don't think it's actually, it's just commonly used. A swipe file, though, traditionally is like for copywriting. So say you see a sales page you like, and you, you want to learn from it or headlines, specific headlines that you like. So you put them into, you know, a file, however you want to say to save them, maybe in a you know, in the olden days, people used to print them out and put them in an actual file. Now you might, you know, save the links or copy and paste for your own reference only not to use people's content. Um, and then people also refer to it as say, you know, if you're an affiliate and I'm going to give you pre-written emails that you can send to your customers, those are swipe files. That's what they call them that. So he's written all the promotions and we just have to copy and paste them. Often I, it depends on how good they are. Sometimes I will just copy and paste. Oftentimes I will customize. <laughs> Uh-oh, Amelia's a PLR hoarder. Adela, uh-oh, Charlotte, Mike, PLR is an addiction. Uh-oh, okay. But it's, you know, it's not, it, we can turn it into a good thing because it can be a good thing. <laughs> All right, so... Um, and then this content cash flow promo I decided to do, and I'm going to tell you why I decided to do it. So say, you know, always think about repurposing your content. And that's what this essentially is going to be. Because during the bestseller summit, I'm going to speak about starting a PLR business. So I'm going to take that presentation and give out some, you know, parts of it. We will have the transcripts and notes that I can bring certain things out and I can start promoting that to other people. I'm reusing that content. So, you know, I put all, we put all that work into the bestseller summit. We need to be using that and using it again to do, to do good things for our business. Okay. So are we okay with the promotions tab. Again, how many you're going to put there is up to you. Start with one. If it's overwhelming for you, do one, but make it run longer. Because you want, you're going to be publishing content all month. So maybe you want to do two, it depends. But, you know, don't, don't overwhelm yourself. So then the next tab we have is full content pieces. So what this is, is things, not your tweets, not your quick social media posts, probably not your Instagram, unless you're doing something very detailed. And maybe you, maybe, you know, if you do outsource that and you have a graphic designer design those for you might want to get this planned in here as well. Um, but we're talking about blog posts, videos, or things that, you know, require your time, more time for you to create or for you to find, or for you to find someone to do for you. Right. And Amelia, Adela asks, how far in advance do you do your promos and products? I, I kind of plan a year in advance, but it's very rough. I mostly do it a month, a month at a time, because then I can do more detail because I know what's really happening. I don't want to get too detailed a year in advance because things are going to change or I'll find out something's not going to work. Right. So. I, you know, and if you're worried about how far in advance and if it's new planning's new to you, just do the month, do a month, so do the month, the next month, the month before. So when this challenge is over before the end of February, make sure you're planning March. If you're hiring writers, you might need to do it a little earlier because you want to make sure they have time to get their stuff done. Lynn wants to start with one week. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> okay, you can. Of course, any, you know, anything that gets you into it and you could do it week by week. You could even do this challenge week by week. If you want, I'm not checking your homework only as much as you want me to check it. So if you want to share what you like everything, then you absolutely can. All right. So here's the list of my, my, uh, full content pieces for elite writers labs. So you see there, I have the scheduled publish date. I have 
I have a couple because I'm we're working on the bestseller summit. I have a couple things that go before because I wanted to make sure I wrote them down. Go before our actual challenge because our actual challenge starts here. But you'll see, you know, I have a blog post planned. Uh, why learn from experts, which warms people up to the idea. <laughs> Oh, Bill, sorry, Bill distracted me. He says, I know what BS is, but what is BSS? Yes, we uh, lovingly call the bestseller summit, the BS summit. <laughs> we, we, we know, we know about this, but, and it's, it's funny. Yes. <laughs> but bestseller summit is uh, if for people who want to sell more information products and books, it's for authors, writers, and even people who don't write, who just publish you know, happen to publish books and, and information products. So we are starting them off here with a blog post on why learn from experts. Um, you know, kind of get them warmed up to the idea of, you know, learning from somebody who's been there and done that. And it's stuff that's, you know, improve, and our, our experts are always people who do what they say. So it kind of warms them up to this idea of having, you know, mentors, and in the case of the bestseller summit, very inexpensive mentors to get started. The next column is format. And this is gonna be a blog post. And I write down my purpose. So we're gonna get people, that one probably actually will just be, oh yeah, no, we would still have an opt-in. So the, the purpose will be for them to opt in to getting more information about the bestseller summit because this will be the pre-launch period. So we won't have, they won't be able to, to register yet. So I make a due date because this is being planned very short time in advance. The, the due date and the actual publishing date are close together, five days. Um, I'm usually way more ahead on that. I have to be completely honest with Elite Writers Lab. I am often a poor planner because I you know, really focus on the PLR stuff and that is planned well in advance, very organized, but I knew that I need to step it up here. So I'm uh, challenging myself to do that. So here you could put yes or no if it's completed. Uh, here you would put who to create or where to acquire. Now this, you probably don't, you won't, you might have an idea on this. If you're gonna make it yourself or you already have a writer or a source, then you can put it here. If you're not sure, leave it blank because we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. So, uh, so this, in this case, we actually have something written on this. I will just take it again. I'm, you know, I'm all about this repurposing content and using it again, because you've done it once. Like, don't, don't, uh, wor don't worry about showing it again. And I'm actually, now I know I keep mentioning Lynn, but this makes me think of her Instagram that, you know, thinking about content, you think that your audience has seen content and you might not want to show it again. But Lynn shares her low carb meals on, uh, on Instagram and elsewhere. I tend to see them on Instagram and she has this breakfast like a lot. <laughs> and it's, I think it's, it's some kind of nuts, walnuts or something, strawberries. And I forget, is it cottage cheese? And so she takes a picture of, and she actually does a different picture. She doesn't share the same picture every time, but she keeps posting that same breakfast and she, people just love it. Like they, they're liking it, they're commenting on it and like they get excited about it and new people see it every time, like she says, and there you go. So never think that, you know, something you've done once will not be interesting because the first time around, someone probably never saw it. Then or they saw it, but they needed to, to be reiterated to them because they think, oh yeah, that's great. I should do that. And I like that. But then they go about their business and they forget. You can also, when you repurpose content, you can add more to it. Sometimes Lynn might get a little crazy and change the nuts in her series. I don't know if she does that, but I'm just using that as an example. But, you know, doing something just a little bit different, adding some value, something slightly different, but you're reusing that content. So this uh, column here would be if you've assigned it or not. This, these items don't need to be assigned because, because I'm gonna make sure they're done. They're kind of already done. I just have to repurpose them. Talk about where to publish. Uh, we'll put it on our blog. We'll share it with our affiliates as well. You know, Really think about if you have an affiliate program, get that content out to them 
Uh, you know, some affiliates that you have only ever want to promote something where they know, you know, that's going to go straight to a sales page. They're going to make some money right away. And sometimes content sometimes converts better than sales pages, but sometimes there are affiliates who just want to share free stuff. So give them the free stuff, make all your uh, affiliates happy. All right. And whether it's been published, your traffic plan and results. So those are kinds of things that we'll be covering in the, in the rest of the training sessions. So I'll just briefly kind of go through maybe some of some of this. So we're going to, like I said, just to, to give you ideas on how you can repurpose content, create new content. So we're going to take highlights from presentations from last year for speakers who are coming back, but they have a new topic. <laughs> Patricia's tired. <laughs> Is it too much? Too much? <laughs> All right. Uh, and little highlights or maybe release the full recordings, not or whichever. Um, then we also do, we have paid content. This is for customer satisfaction is the goal because our Elite Writers Lab members get a monthly uh, newsletter and it includes four in-depth articles. So more in-depth than maybe we would post to the blog and stuff like that. And that gets us on, uh, my, our project manager, Melody Spear, who I'm sure he, he, she does my customer support as well. You probably talked to her and she you know, gets it out to the writers and, and uh, assigns that. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave that tab for a moment. And I forgot to mention now, if you're wondering, oh, text, it, what do I mean by text? It just means that it's gonna be, the writer's gonna create text and then Melody will put it in the newsletter. So it ends up being a newsletter, but the, instead of it's not video. In this case, I mentioned it's blog post with video because it's not just gonna be text. I have to add video as well. Whatever you write in there, you can, I mean, figure out what makes sense to you, how you wanna do that. Um, and actually speaking of formats, in this brainstorming tab here, I think you'll find this uh, quite useful. Um, and I was going to go through these, but I think it's better. You know, it's all here for you. You guys can read through this, but I really encourage you to do this. Okay. So if you're like thinking, I don't know what kind of content to create. That's great. Alice just showed us some stuff and I've got a few ideas, but now I'm lost. Go through this and it's in the brainstorming tab. It'll be there anytime you need it, but this is first the kinds of content you could create. If you're in my publish for prosperity group, you'll know that I shared that with there. So it's articles, blog posts, workbooks, reports, checklists, transcripts, autoresponder messages, tons of stuff. So, and it all gives you a little idea, like more detail than what I'm just rambling off here for you. So you'll always have an idea of what to do. And, you know, people love having things in different formats. People love printables. I, it's surprising to me, like how much they love to have a worksheet or things like that. They will readily opt in to get that. Um, all kinds of things you can do here. And then there's topic starters as well. Um, if you go to the, Jackie, the top of the chat, there's a link to the document. It's in your members area as well. So if you log in at listmagnets.com, do the customer login link and you go to intensive content results, you'll see it on session one. So you can grab this file or at the top of the chat, the link was posted there. If anyone wants to post it again for everybody, that that would be great as well. I don't want to mess around too much. Oh, thank you, Lexi. Lexi did it for us. Perfect. So topic starters like capitalizing on the news, paying attention to current events, you know, adding stuff to a, if you guys have an RSS reader, which is really simple syndication, which you don't need to really know what it stands for. And I'm sure a lot of people here do already know this stuff, but just for anybody who doesn't, um, you could start a, to keep track of news and other blogs and sites in your niche. You can use a tool like Feedly. I believe it's feedly.com. I don't know if they have some weird extension at the end like those, but I think it's feedly.com or Google Feedly if that doesn't work. Um, 
you can for free create an account and it'll start to keep track and you can scan headlines and things like that. Follow some news stuff. And, and, and I think in Google, like for example, Google news, you can also set up your own feeds as well on certain topics, start doing stuff like that so that you get these ideas coming in for yourself. But there's lots of other things you can do. You can ask questions to to um, I don't mean Google alerts. You can do Google alerts as well. If you guys want to Google that, if you don't know what Google alerts are, that gives you topics on all, like you could put in keywords and Google will tell you all content, but in the news.google.com, you can actually like follow news, the actual, like, well, even though they throw blogs into the news now too, but you know, official, official uh, current events, whatever. Um, but use both, use everything at your disposal. <laughs> um, so you can ask questions, for example, of your audience, like instead of you doing all the content, ask them stuff, dispel a myth, look at stuff that's been popular, or your content that's been popular before and see how you can, uh, you know, expand on that or bring it back. Lots of ideas for you, you know, top putting a resource list for someone in your industry, make a prediction about the future, um, stare a provocative opinion that always gets attention, but there's so many things here. So, you know, there's more than 30 here. And if you wanted to do something every single day and you just use one of these ideas, you've, you've got it right. So definitely use this brainstorming thing and that will help you come up with what goes into full content pieces and how many full content pieces you should have in this tab again up to you um what whatever you think that you need to plan for and do and so that will bring us to dailies the exciting part doing something every single day which is what i want you guys to do but do it with purpose so in this one, we'll have your social media, your emails that you're going to send to your list. A lot of my emails, you know, I didn't put them in full content pieces because they're quick, they're short. Um, if I wanted to plan it out a little bit better, I would have those listed there. You might, if you're outsourcing your emails, then you probably want to put them in your full content pieces. And I'm going to answer Lexi's, Lexi's question about do you email every day? Um, just about. <laughs> you guys must know this. I email you a lot. <laughs> uh, I was talking for uh, Charlotte, uh, news.google.com. I think that's still where it is, right? And I think at the bottom, there are options to create feeds of your own. But I, it's been a while since I looked at that. But I think you can. Or you can go to Google Google the phrase Google alerts and you can set something up there. Um, okay. So when you look at my plan here, so we've got daily email, other dailies, which could be like your blog, put your, I, I kind of, I didn't put blog because I thought it might not be your blog. It might just be an article on your site or I, I just anything else that you might be doing daily. You can change the spreadsheet as much as you want to. If something else applies to you more than change it up. Facebook page, Facebook group, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram. I can't see something's blocking Google, Google plus. Does anyone use Google plus? <laughs> um, anyways, I put those in there. There may be more, there may be fewer. And as you can see, I got some, I got nothing on these ones. That doesn't mean they're not important. And that doesn't mean this, you should do what, what I've got here. What it means is that they're not important to me right now. They may be in the future. I mean, we do have a Pinterest and an Instagram account, but I know that I should not overwhelm myself. And I don't have the team in place to, to do that for me. And in the future, we may do that. I'm starting to do that with my, my Publish for Prosperity business. I have hired somebody to start getting more on top of the social media for me where I don't have to worry about that so much. So for me, I'm not going to do this. And I want you to look, I didn't put YouTube, but I guess that would be in the full content pieces. Add YouTube if you want <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is that, that, that works for you. And you mean, you could do Facebook live if that's important to you as well. Um, the thing is you don't have to do everything, but you should get yourself immersed in some stuff, right? 
figuring out what works, what works for you. So in this, for this challenge, I would like you to look at a couple of things, you know, beyond your email and your other, your blog and stuff like that. Look at a couple other things and put some focus into those. And Jackie is asking, uh, so dailies are the things we do to promote the content we create? Yes, in part, right? In sometimes it will be the content and the, sometimes it'll be promoting. Like for example, Twitter, you, if you've got content to promote, you know, you're more likely to put a link because you can't put the whole con piece of content in there unless you can do it in, how many characters do you have now? 280 or something? I'm just looking at the questions. I'm going to get to those. I think those are good for later. Um, so here you can see, and I actually think, I don't know if I got off track. <laughs> if I answered Lexi's question. Oh, yes, I did. I said that I do email almost daily. That's my focus. And I'll tell you why. And, you, and I, I encourage you to do it too. I mean, I think there are great examples of people who don't focus on email. But for me, it's always been the easiest, lowest maintenance and what gets results because email is still the most commercial medium other than advertising. You know, it's, it's also cheap. The ROI on email is huge. People expect to get promotions by email um, through social media. It's a little bit more tricky. You gotta, you gotta have more skill <laughs> to do it. And you know, social media is not something you own. It could be gone in an instant, right? Your autoresponder service might go out of business, but you still have that list. You have those files. And um, Jackie, just, just uh, hold tight, okay? So we're just going to talk because yours is going to look different. I don't think you need to worry exactly about what I have here, but, and I haven't walked through it yet. So once we're done, I think you'll get it a little bit better. And Lynn says, my audience stresses if they don't get my emails. Is it broken? Are you alive? Yes. And, you know, it used to be where people said email once a week or something like that. That's, those times are gone. And there is a lot of noise in the email inboxes. But the if you can engage your audience, they're going to be looking forward to emails. Just like Lynn said, her audience wonders, where the heck are you? Why aren't you emailing? Right? So in this case, I would just write down what I plan to email. Just an idea, and this could change too. Like it is challenging to plan a month and a half in advance, but as best you can, put something there. Refer to this every day and come back and say, this is what I need to do today. Um, here, these are, I only put blog posts in these other dailies. So you can see that I don't focus on that as much. So we've got some ideas of blog posts we can put, we can make. Our Facebook page is often, you know, a duplicate of maybe what's on the blog or pointing people to the blog. It's kind of not very creative. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. If you're looking for an example of Facebook pages to follow, it's probably not ours because that's not our that's not our big focus, right? We work on getting people into the list and and working with them that way. Facebook group, we have a paid Facebook group, so this should be you know, po posted to more often. This is about customer satisfaction, right? So often we will, uh, you know, share the content that we share freely, but maybe go give, go deeper, give more, more interesting th thoughts, get them engaged in conversations, those kinds of things. So you'll see, I think I have something almost every day for here. And then Twitter, you know, same thing, just ideas of what to tweet and and you know you can make the more you have here the more you're going to be ready to to do stuff and I know it's not always easy to think up in advance but it will help so Jackie in short I hope that's helping a little bit and again happy to help walk you through this but it's just your plan of what you're going to post where you're going to post and it's just a reminder to you. And what I would do with this is I plan a month in advance. Then I also have my planner that I told you that has the monthly calendar. So I put all the promos there. Then I have, it's a weekly planner. So over two pages, open pages, I have seven days of 
where I can write stuff in. So I would on the Sunday or sometimes the Friday before I would write all this stuff into my planner for each day so that I know it's there. Cause it's a little harder to follow. This is a great way to plan it, but then when you actually need to do it, you want to see it on a daily basis. So I, I write it into my planner the week before so that I'm ready to go when that week finally comes. All right. So I think we're good with the content for now. You're going to start your planning again. If you're scared and you don't know what to do, brainstorming tab is going to, is going to help you a lot. Go through that. Um, you could print it, print it out, keep it near you, copy and paste it into a word document if it to make it a little more printer friendly. Okay, Alice, one more time reminding you that we will, this is modern day, that we are going to get together for the live session now. If you are watching the premiere, if you're watching a recording, you can watch a recording of this the session we're going to about to talk about. But if you're here for the study group live, then the link to the next place to meet on YouTube again is uh, going to appear on this video and also in the description below. See you there.